All right, good Thursday evening, everybody, live and direct from House Onik in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a look at your Thursday evening and into the weekend forecast. Things are looking pretty good across the Mid-South as we get into the course of the next couple of days. We have nothing really major taking place anytime soon where it comes to any major amounts of problems, so good news on that. But again, if you are going to be doing anything outdoors this weekend, going to have some warm conditions to deal with at the very least. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. If you've never joined us here before, welcome to the show. Nice to have you along. And again, a good opportunity for you to sound off on what's going on with what's happening with the weather forecast in the Mid-South area. If you have any questions about the forecast, anything we can do to uh, get you more information as to what's going on, uh, we'd love to be able to have you along again for the uh, near future and to keep you updated as to what's going on uh, here in the Mid-South area with what's happening in and around the area. So keep it tuned for more updates on what's happening with the Mid-South and the forecast coming up into the rest of the evening for tonight. It's pretty quiet out there right now. Unfortunately, it's also very much on the muggy side. We do not have much of anything going on in the way of cooler weather as of just yet, but we will be looking for hopefully some good weather as we get into the course of the next several days because as of right now it's very warm and very steamy out there and the only reason that I'm indoors tonight is partly because of the humidity but mostly because of the mosquitoes out there so we are again going to be seeing some pretty warm conditions out across much of the area tonight and again into the rest of the next couple of days so if you have any plans for outdoors go ahead and keep them but just be prepared to be uh, indoors again if at all possible because it's looking at some very warm and muggy conditions out across much of the mid-south okay give me a second to get things ready to go here for our facebook viewers and be glad to have you along we are currently live on periscope and twitter and keeping you updated as to what's going on in and around the Mid-South area. So again, thanks a lot for joining us for tonight and keeping you updated as to what's going on again uh, for this evening. We can see the possibility of some uh, more possibilities of showers and thunderstorms out there, but just not that much going on again for the evening hours. So again, just not that much. Some areas on radar picking up some scattered light showers, but that's about all that we have to speak of at this point in time. So good news on that. Live and direct on Facebook now, at least that's what we hope is going on. Uh, hopefully everybody's able to hear me and see me at this point. Let me make certain the volume levels are adjusted at this point in time. If you've never joined us before, again, this is our online video weather blog, bringing more more information to the online sphere than what we have on air. And this is one of the only forums that we can really do something as dedicated as a 15 minute weathercast. You just can't do that uh, anytime during the time that you're doing anything involving uh, on air presentations on there. More information about the forecast, again, that's available right here at wreg.com slash weather and also in the blue bar right here. Red bar, again, getting more information as to what you're looking for uh, for more details, again, going on here into around the uh, rest of the forecast cast area. We'll go ahead and get started again for tonight and show you a little bit more about what's going on. We do have again some scattered light showers taking place into and around areas of the Tennessee River Valley. There's not that much going on at this time. But we will be again seeing the possibility of some more showers and thunderstorms into the Mid-South into the course of the next couple of days. But right now we're just not seeing much of anything uh, going on in the way of major problems. And there will be maybe a few scattered showers out there. Notice again we may see some activity down to the south of the Maidon area. And this is where we're picking up again most of the showers for right now and over into around portions of uh, the area south into around northeastern areas of Mississippi. That's about the heaviest activity that we've got, and that's about all that we've had across uh, the area for the rest of the night. So again, this is the worst of the worst of what we've seen today. Not even any thunderstorms taking place. Uh, this is, again, just all that we've had so far, and not much more than that to worry about at this point in time. So a little bit of activity, but beyond that, just really not that much to show you at this point. Okay, live again on Facebook, trying again to see what's going on with our connection problems here, even though the emitter is sitting right over my shoulder and keeping you informed as to what's going on a little bit late, but thanks for joining us on Facebook tonight. Again, most of what we're seeing on radar at this time is going to be, again, uh, the scattered light showers that you see 
over just around the Tennessee River Valley, dropping to the southwest. Don't really see that too often, but we again see a lot of that activity coming up uh, from time to time out across portions of the Mid-South. And that continues into around northeast Mississippi. Looks like a couple of thunderstorms as well into and around the area just northeast of Tupelo. If that hangs on, we may see again some rumbles of thunder in and around Tupelo, but there's just not that much. This is right on the eastern counties of the News Channel 3 viewing area specifically so just right outside the viewing area and just to around the area close to northeast Mississippi. So Corinth, Kossuth, uh, back up to around Selmer, Tennessee, uh, picking up a little bit of activity. But again, beyond that, we're just not really looking at too much of anything. Thanks to everybody for joining me on Facebook. Again, thanks for sticking around for tonight. Again, I would love to do everything outside for tonight, but here's part of the problem. Uh, the temperatures tonight are just way too warm out there, and yes, maybe that makes me a bit of a weather wuss, but as of right now, I would rather prefer to be indoors if at all possible, especially with numbers like this. These are the temperatures as of about the top of the hour, and if you'll give me one second here on the preview on the enhanced data display, I'm going to bring up some numbers that everybody really doesn't want to see, and that is the heat index numbers, and you can see those are pretty preferable as well to being indoors tonight, mid-80s to mid to upper 70s out there, and that's again about as good as we get uh, into the Mid-South area for tonight. So not really seeing too much in the way of very much in the way of cool weather. Yes, the first day of fall does start tomorrow at about 3.02 p.m., but unfortunately the warmer weather is going to be sticking around again through the uh, rest of the day today and into around the uh, rest of the weekend from what it looks like. We'll talk about that forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Big weather story of the day is, of course, naturally Maria sitting out into the Caribbean and just around the area of the Turks and Caicos. Uh, News Channel 3's Troy Washington was actually going to be traveling there a couple of weeks ago uh, with some of her sorority sisters, and I hope that they managed to get that uh, trip in without getting uh, too much in any trouble with travel out there. That was right before Irma smacked into that area, but as of right now, just some amazing uh, videography out of what's going on here. Puerto Rico is entirely without power tonight. They just scoured the island. Uh, uh, Maria did that, and that, again, is going to be making its way on up to the north, <clears throat> excuse me, and to the west. But, again, the computer models at this time do not have it becoming a threat to the United States at this point. That's the important thing to remember on that. Again, Maria Category 3 hurricane winds back up to around 125 miles per hour. Jose, again, not much to worry about here. It is still a tropical storm, probably to become a tropical depression into the next couple of days. And it looks like for now, it's starting to take the opposite turn. It looks like the sphere is kind of turning a little bit, and we are seeing this thing rotate back out into the Atlantic by afternoon on Sunday. Now, that does mean that portions of around Cape Cod, Maine, Long Island Sound, even down toward the Delmarva Peninsula could quite possibly pick up some very heavy surf, some winds, some rain, and again, some pretty nasty outdoor conditions. Not a hurricane, not tropical storm force, but it could be pretty breezy. Matter of fact, you can see the orange shaded area right here. There are tropical storm advisories out for Cape Cod, Nantucket, down to around Rhode Island. So this thing is still able to generate a lot of energy, and it's going to continue to do that throughout the rest of the next couple of days. So as of right now, again, Maria is expected to curve northward between the United States and Bermuda. So it does not appear to be a problem. It also appears to be diminishing by just a little bit. Should be a Category 2 or less by uh, Saturday afternoon and then moving its way out of the picture, heading on away at this point in time. So this is going to be, again, what we see uh, throughout the rest of the next couple of days. Welcome to everybody on Facebook. Thanks for joining us for tonight. Uh, water vapor satellite, again, shows a decent amount of humidity around. You can tell the cloud tops where, again, we've got the... Uh, Areas of spotty areas of showers taking place. That's those clouds that you see over the Tennessee River Valley uh, right there to the east of Memphis and then down toward the Gulf Coast states. But we don't really have too much in the way of dry air. few pockets of it, but beyond that, just really not that much to talk about. Currently, again, on the seven-day forecast, National Weather Service in Memphis not showing anything uh, in the way of any hazardous weather anytime soon, so pretty quiet there. Uh, what's left of Jose, again, is going to be just basically kind of hovering in place back over toward the East Coast states, and it's going to be kind of sticking around there in the far right-hand side of your screen. 
that is going to be, again, the possibility of seeing some weekend plans ruined if you are going to be uh, out to and around that area there. Uh, so a bit of a problem for travel there. Also, a big cold front coming in through the Rockies, which is doing a good job of bringing rain, snow, and cooler conditions. And thanks to all the firefighters out there for doing what they're doing out there and the smoke jumpers and the administration officials and the meteorologists and everybody else for keeping track of those fires out there. If you'd like to know more about those fires, we have links available at wreg.com slash weather. So again, thanks a lot for uh, everybody out there for keeping everybody safe at that point in time. Let's see what's going on again here and see what we've got again for low temperatures tonight, which is not looking all that low, unfortunately. Randy Fuller, 100 degrees in Florida. I believe it. Pretty warm down there. Linda Bush, 40s in Eugene. I'm assuming that's Oregon, if I remember correctly. Snow in the Cascades. That sounds good. Uh, say hello to a former pastor of mine who's over at the uh, University of Oregon. Uh, if he's up that direction at one of the Lutheran churches at some point in time. And thanks to everybody else again for checking in uh, for tonight across much of the Mid-South area. Brett Smith, another week until cooler temperatures. Yeah, unfortunately, it kind of looks that way. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Lows tonight, not that low, upper 60s to lower to mid-70s. High temperatures on Friday in the lower to mid-90s once again. That's just the air temperature. Let's really disappoint ourselves and take a look at the heat index, which in some places will be, again, around 100 degrees. So not really much help there. Chances of rain, yes, but not great to say the least. We're looking again at less of any chance of anything really going on here in the way of major amounts of problems. Low temperatures Friday night back in the upper 60s to lower 70s. Uh, weather around the time of Friday night football is going to be uh, nice with no rain expected around the Mid-South area except for maybe a shower or two, maybe rumble of thunder like what we've seen out around Tupelo tonight. But game time temperatures tomorrow, mid 80s. So if you're going to the football stadiums, especially if you're going to be sitting in the side that faces the sun, make certain you take along a nice cool beverage to cool yourself off out there and make certain that everybody stays nice because it's going to be pretty steamy by the time the game starts. Mid 80s at about that time frame and heat index temperatures for the marching bands and the football players and the officials and everybody else out there. It's going to be steamy. It's going to be about, it'll feel like 90 about the time the game time is going on. Let's get into the weekend. Saturday, temperatures back in the lower to mid 90s, isolated chance of a thunderstorm. Saturday night, temperatures in the high 60s to lower 70s. Sunday's temperatures, again, back into the lower 90s, so not much change there. Low temperatures Sunday night in the mid to upper 60s, less chance of anything involving showers or thunderstorms. And high temperatures again on Monday going back into the 90s. Now, we do see the possibility of a new thunderstorm uh, area, new system kind of making its way through the Mid-South, at least giving us a brushing uh, glance of some showers and thunderstorms from Wednesday in through around Wednesday evening. That'll be the best possibility of anything really going on. But beyond that, we just don't really have too much of anything else uh, at this point in time, so something to think about there. Uh, Kevin Dunn, comment on solar flares causing earthquakes, please. Uh, completely and totally uh, unrelated items does not happen. And uh, according to everything that we know about the uh, earthquakes, uh, caused, again, under the ground, not affected by anything involving uh, solar energy that comes smacking into the earth. So, again, uh, different concepts on there. If you'd like to know more about that, I'd really suggest uh, contacting the Center for Earthquake Research and Information, and they're available at the University of Memphis. And so far, again, things have been, again, pretty quiet in the Mid-South area when it comes to that, and great place to go to on that. And if you want to ask more questions, I'm not trying to shuffle off the question. I'm not a seismic expert. My degree is in atmospheric science and physics and not uh, meteorology. So if you want to go to a great place, you can go to memphis.edu slash CERI for the Center for Earthquake Research and Information from the University of Memphis. Great place to go to for tons of information available. And there's actually, if you take a look at my Facebook page and scroll down by just a little bit, there's a couple of very good uh, articles on here from earlier today from Tembler.net. This one is pretty cool because it asks the question about what may be coming next when it comes to earthquakes. Did a series of earthquakes farther south in Mexico actually cause the one that happened in Mexico City just a couple of days ago? And this is from Iris Earthquake Science. 
So a good opportunity, again, to see uh, more information about the science behind these things, what we know, what we don't know, stuff like that. So something to think about there. Charity Rose Ragsdale, bring on the second season of Bad Weather. It's on its way. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Lynn Rooks, good evening to you as well. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Twitter, again, if you'd like to stop by for more information, all you have to do is head to my Twitter page at twitter.com slash aonic underscore WREG3. Fortunately, not much to go in the way of showers or thunderstorms for severe weather purposes uh, for tonight. And if you're on Facebook and want to see what we look like on Periscope, good opportunity to see what's going on here. And look, there's me watching me, watching me, watching me. Cool. Haven't seen that happen in quite some time. Also on Instagram, got some good pictures, including this doozy of a sunrise from the Medtronic campus. Uh, Whoever is sending me these pictures from Medtronic, thank you very much. But Please include your uh, name, if you would, please, so we can thank you directly. Uh, we'd love to know, not, again, anything personal nature of that, but just let us know that we, so we can thank you and let p uh, everyone know who's taking these really cool pictures out there. So thank you very much on that. More information about the second uh, severe weather season, as Ms. Ragsdale was talking about here. Time to get ready for it, and the National Weather Service is teaching severe weather spotter training courses beginning next Tuesday. If you would like to take these classes, all you have to do is show up and take the course and it's available to you to find out more information you can go to weather.gov slash m-e-g that's the code word uh, code phrase code signal for memphis so weather.gov slash m-e-g and then click on the spotter training schedule to find out more about the ones there are about a dozen of them scheduled from around the mid-south there is not one scheduled for memphis or shelby county the closest one is going to be in fayette county in somerville tennessee or in lafayette county and that's going to be about as close as it gets usually the one from memphis is scheduled into and around the early springtime area uh, about February or March. If you'd like to have the National Weather Service come and visit your place of worship, your business, your organization, you can email them here at sr-meg.wx at noaa.gov or again, a good opportunity to call them up. They're also on the phone as well if you want to give them a call instead at their office number at 544-0399 good opportunity to, again to learn more about what's happening or again go directly to their home page best way to get there go to weather.gov uh, that's the home page of the national weather service go to the map make your way down to the mid-south click there and poof there you are at the national weather service forecast office in memphis and you can click on that headline right there at the top of the screen at this point in time uh see linda bush yes raining off and on this week now snow in the mountains uh, glad somebody got to go see Crater Lake. I didn't know if my friend's wife and her husband were going to be able to make it out there with all the fires and everything going on. Uh, glad to hear things are a little better out that direction. Now, one last sciencey thing before we wrap up for tonight. There's a satellite that is making its way, or at least it was. Hopefully, it, I'll have to go back to the other page. Hang on one second here. Uh, the OSIRIS-REx satellite is swinging by Earth and is going to be passing Earth tomorrow. It's been in orbit, kind of paralleling just a little bit off from the Earth's orbit. Tomorrow through the afternoon, and I believe it's about 2 or 3.30 or so, uh, the satellite is going to fly past Earth very, very quickly. It's going to get a gravity boost. It's going to slingshot around the planet, and it's going to meet up with a asteroid called Bennu, B-E-N-N-U, to study uh, one of the oldest objects in the solar system, estimated to be about 4.5 billion years old. So this spacecraft is going to go right past the Earth as we go into tomorrow, and several places, including those with large telescopes, have been able to see it, uh, been able to keep track of it out there. If you'd like to know more about this, all you have to do is go to Asteroid Mission dot org and keep up to date with what osiris rex is doing and be glad to see that fling on by the area once again uh for the next couple of days not much good news although according to our forecast from the news channel 3 severe weather center we may be looking at some improved weather coming up next thursday at least not quite as hot so definitely good news there again more information on that forecast available at wreg.com slash weather. We'll be on with your Friday forecast on AM 730, Yahoo Sports Radio, so stay tuned for more on that. And again, outside of a few showers taking place tonight, there's just really not that much on radar for this evening, so not really much to show you at this point in time uh, where it comes to rain across 
much of the Mid-South. Would love to have some more showers out there, but as of right now, there's just really not that much going on. All right, that'll wrap it up for tonight. Again, we'll keep track of the weather going on. Todd Demers will have more on your forecast coming up bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. That'll be starting at 4.30 a.m. My forecast on AM 730. Jim Jaggers tonight. Almost time for Go Jim Go, so give Jim an E slap on the back. Say good job. He's helping to raise money for a very worthy cause, and you can find out more about that again at WRAG dot com slash weather for more. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik, live and direct from House Onik, and thanks a lot to everybody for joining us. Stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 on air and online.